In the last segment, we talked about the baptism of repentance. And here we have in this section, verses 9 through 11 of Mark chapter 1, we have Jesus being baptized. Why did he have to be baptized, especially since this was a baptism of repentance? And we'll see here, there are several good reasons for it. He didn't need to repent, he was not guilty of sin, and so it's an interesting passage. And so let's read Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. With that, let's open in prayer. Father, thank you for this baptism of Jesus, the example that he's provided and presented us. God, we just pray that we'll be faithful and obedient. Help us be as John and not pointing to ourselves, but pointing to you. And God, just bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. And one thing, opening with prayer, you can either have a fueled ministry, F-U-E-L-E-D, which means that God provides you the strength, and that's through prayer, the power through prayer. Or you could be a fooled ministry and think you're doing something significant, and yet you're not even praying, you're not committing anything to God. You can't do that in your own flesh. So that's why we always open in prayer and also close in prayer, because it's yeah awesome to do. We're also supposed to pray without ceasing, so 1 Thessalonians 5 would agree. Why was Jesus baptized? Again, interesting, a baptism of repentance, but Jesus did not need to repent. Well, one reason, it was an example for us to follow. Just as we follow in Christ's blessings and sufferings, we also can follow him in baptism, a symbol of dying and rising. And so when we go under the water, it's like dying with him and then rising with him by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we see various passages that talk about that, Romans 8, 1 Corinthians 15, and continuous. But yeah, we see that we're going to rise with him if we have put our faith in him. It's also a physical symbol of his future death and resurrection, that Jesus was being baptized and saying, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to die, and on the third day, I'm going to rise again. It's also a seeming start to his ministry. Baptism can be a direct commitment to following after the Father. We see this was not an issue with Jesus. So in Jesus' case, this was already the scenario that even from the foundation of the world, he was going to do what he was intended to do. <laughs> Um, also, another thing, to fulfill all righteousness. So to fulfill all righteousness. It was God's plan for this to occur. And another thing, assigned to John, so that he could also proclaim this is the Messiah, to show others, including John, that this was the Son of God, on whom both the Father's and Spirit's favor rested. And in another place in Scripture, John is told, upon whom you see the Spirit descend and uh, my favor rest, that's the Son of God. That's, this is the Messiah, the one you've been uh, called to preach about, <laughs> talking about Jesus. We also see this is a Trinitarian passage, that there's no Trinity written in Scripture, that that word is nowhere, but this is a, an explanation theologically of what Scripture presents, that there's one God in three persons. And so we see that the Father is there. He says, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Also the Spirit descends, and on the Son, the Son of God, Jesus. Very interesting. So a very cool passage. A bad doctrine that can come from this is adoptionism. That's the idea that Jesus became the Son of God at his baptism. There are a lot of challenges to this from Scripture, essentially the whole of the New Testament. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh. It's talking about Jesus in John 1. It's talking about the eternality of Jesus. And even so, Jesus even claimed to be God and from the foundation of the world. And he says in John 8:58, Before Abraham was, I am. And he wasn't just saying that before Abraham was, there was, you know, God existed. Because if so, then they would be like, yeah, man, that's cool. Yeah, I like that statement. But instead, they were like, what did he just say? He just said he was God. He was the covenant name of God that was provided to us. And so they picked up stones and they were, they were about to stone him for blasphemy because they didn't believe that he was God in the flesh. And so Jesus is and always has been the Son of God. We ought to follow his example in baptism. And now it's even more symbolic of what God has intended, in that we need to follow him and be buried with Christ, take our fleshly desires, bury those, crucify those, crucify our flesh, and rise again to new life in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things old have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. God is the one who makes all things new. And again, if you have not put your faith in Jesus, then I, I would definitely urge you, put your faith in Jesus and be made new, because 
There are a lot of things in this life where we're corrupt. We sin, we disobey God, and we need forgiveness. We're never, we're never going to be perfect. And thankfully, God is forgiving. We need to come to him and ask for forgiveness. So I just pray that's a, an encouraging word for you today. And may we follow in his example, Jesus' example, and follow the Son of God, but also follow him in baptism and in faith. So uh, until the next segment, God bless you. And uh, let's close in prayer. Father, thank you so much for Jesus and the ministry of Jesus and the example he provides us. Help us be faithful and obedient in our walks of life. We just praise you for your blessing and being a God who wants to bless us. And I just pray for those watching. Just bless them so much, God. You know their hurts, their wants, their hopes, their needs, their joys, whatever it is, God. You know everything about them. And God, I just pray that you provide everything they need. God, that you would draw them closer to you. And God, we confess our sins. We just repent of our sins. We thank you that Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of our unrighteousness. We just pray, Lord, just give us clean hands and a pure heart. We pray this in Jesus' name. And Lord, just bless this next segment whenever we get to it. And thank you for your word. Thank you for this short passage of scripture that just has such power. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, go in peace. God bless you.